Good afternoon, everyone. I am over on the Indian news in India. Doing a little checking around about what do they put out in India about the situation in Iraq. Now, there was something very interesting. Even our illustrious lying news media here in America put out because every once in a while they'll put a shred of truth clouded in a bunch of lies but they actually told a partial truth when they mentioned that they supported ISIS fighters as a part of the rebel force fighting against Assad in Syria but they do not support this arm of ISIS fighting in Iraq so what they have actually told you is that they are and have and did arm ISIS. And the fact that they say they don't support the ISIS in Iraq, you can just scribble that out because you can bet your bottom dollar they are supporting ISIS in Iraq. I don't think ISIS, ISIL, Levant, I don't think that they are going to blow the oil fields. I think they want control of the oil fields. Remember in Libya, when they did their uh, liberation of Libya and killed Gaddafi, and Mr. Obama and all the guys said, everything's going to be good over there in Libya now. Well, it's not, is it? Guess what happened? You got it. Bad guys got control of the oil fields. So that is what I see happening. I see this being arranged and set up for the bad guys to take control again in Iraq and they will have control of the oil fields and that will be their money maker for them so they can continue to buy arms and strengthen themselves and further dictate um, the swing of the strength in the Middle East to themselves. You know, you got Sunni, Shiite, Kurds. This is ancient. <clears throat> I mean, these they're, they're crazy as it is. You can understand. You should be able to. They're all Arabs, right? But they're tribes. You know, it's just like over in, uh, you know, like Africa. You've got a lot of black people over there, but they're different tribes. And they kill each other. You know, they hate this tribe, they hate the other tribe. They go kill this people of this tribe. This is the same thing. One tribe wants to be superior because mixed in between all this power struggle, you have your... Uh, you know, your dedication to your religious view of how the people should be ran. You know, how, how the worship should be done. You know, how the fight should be carried out and to whom. So, you, you've already seen this. The Arab Spring. You know, you saw it in Egypt. Obama has, has played a role in completely turning everything upside down in the Middle East so that it is reshaped and a harder core uh, of Islam can take over. Because in the end, you know, it will be Islam versus Christianity. That will be the big clash. And uh, when it comes right down to it, it doesn't matter what name it is. It's just simply a clash of good versus evil. Evil goes by many names. You know, you can call evil whatever religion you want. You know, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, whatever. It doesn't matter what the name of it is. It's the ongoing fight from the fall of man, from the war in heaven, of good 
versus evil. So we can put a tag on the name, but that's all it's going to be. So let's see what this Indian article says. It says Iraq's top Shiite cleric urged all people to unite and expel Sunni Muslim insurgents. Says uh, Maliki came under growing pressure at home and abroad. And the Grand Ayatollah Ali al Sistani, a revered, revered cleric among the Shiite majority, called on Iraqis to band together against the insurgents before it's too late. And if the ISIL is not fought and expelled from Iraq, everybody's going to regret it tomorrow when regret doesn't have any meaning. That's what his spokesman said on his behalf. Uh, this recluse, Sistani, he heads the Council of Senior Clerics. And the next government on Iraq must be effective and avoid past mistakes, which he's rebuking Maliki. And they claim 30 Shiite jihadists were killed. That's what the cops say. Says the militants attacked this town here of uh, Diyada, however you pronounce that, northeast of Baghdad, sparking the clashes that killed the 30 Shiite mil militiamen. A police colonel and a doctor said that. Fighting began on Friday morning, eased later in the day, with security forces still in control of that town. Militants deployed in adjoining area. ISIS jihadists to attack Baghdad if Maliki doesn't step down. That's what the Sunni military leader is saying, according to this. Commander of Sunni insurgent forces said that ISIS-led forces were willing to attack Baghdad even at the cost of going into a civil war. Telegraph quoted, Sheikh Ahmed al-Dabash, founder of the Islamic Army of Iraq, is saying the Sunni forces would march into Baghdad if Maliki did not step down. France says, no military intervention without UN backing. France, will, France is weak. I mean, I tell you what, I can't, Help it if you're a French listener. Uh, you know, nothing against French people or nothing. But I'm just saying, France, you know, they're always bringing up the rear. You know, that's just the way it is. France will not consider a military option to stop the insurgents' defensive in Iraq until it receives the green light from the UN. Can we have permission? What do you want us to do? French Foreign Minister Laurent Fabius said, We have a principle we can intervene if there was a request from the Iraqi government and with UN authorization. Fabius stressed and added when or added Western intervention can be effective if it's backed up by a unity government. That's like a gang of the willing. With or without Maliki, what Iraq needs is government and national unity. Clashes killed 34 security forces on the Syrian border. Iraqi security forces clashes with Sunni Muslim militants have killed 34 Iraqi security force members in the al a town on the Syrian border. Fighting broke out late Thursday and continued until about noon Friday with militants in control of most of the town. Security forces officers and a local official, and a local official said that. Top Iraq Shiite cleric has urged a new government avoiding past mistakes. And there you go. Grand Ayatollah Ali al-Sistani, very reclusive, called for the formation of an effective government that is acceptable on a national level and avoids the past mistakes. Same remark he made. Militants regrouping in Iraq refinery attack. Colonel Ali al Trishi, the army officer in charge of protecting key Iraqi refinery besieged by Sunni militants said he feared insurgents were regrouping to resume their assault on the Bajaf refinery some 250 kilometers north of Baghdad. Its loss would be a devastating symbol of the Baghdad government's powerlessness in the face of the offensive by Sunni militants of the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant. The Indian nationals who have been abducted remain safe, said Siad Akbarudin official spokesperson, Ministry of External Affairs, India. Over a million people have been forced out of their homes just this year in Iraq. That was according to the UN Ref Refugee Agency. Oh, that's per CNN. Well, question that.
but you know a large number. The number may not be perfect. You know, humanitarian crisis brewing. Families who fled fighting with little more than a clothes on their back seek water, food, and shelter from the summer heat. That's believable. Obama lacks will, according to Iran. <clears throat> yes, isn't it? Isn't it something? The enemy of my enemy is my friend, apparently. U.S. President Barack Obama lacks serious will to combat terrorism, a top Iranian official said on Friday after a request from the Iraqi government for U.S. airstrikes went unanswered. Deputy Foreign Minister Hassan Amir Abdallah Hayan comments followed a statement from Obama on the Iraq crisis, which he pledged to send military advisors to Baghdad but stopped short of further action on this stage. Breaking, Iran says Obama lacks will to combat terrorism. Details will follow. Then you have your Iraqi forces preparing to strike back. Obama has offered up to 300 Americans. These are supposed to be advisors, but you can bet your bottom dollar these advisors are going to be highly trained and carry weapons and have authorization to fire them. So that's uh, apparently on top of the 275 Marines he already sent, so that put, would put it up to 575. But there's no boots on the ground, and as Gerald Salente has commented, I guess they have flip-flops then. In the area around Samara on the main highway, north of Baghdad, become a front line of the battle with the ISIS Levant, the principal provincial governor, a rare Sunni supporter of Maliki, told cheering troops they would now force ISIL and the Allies back. We'll see about that. Uh, France called for the formation of a unity government, with or without Maliki, to fight jihadists advancing toward Baghdad. Hillary Clinton, ooh, Hillary, Billary Clinton, he regretted the U.S. invasion in 2003, telling an Indian news channel it would not be right for the U.S. to get involved in the current crisis unless... Maliki stopped being sectarian. She slammed him for being a sectarian leader for a small sect of the population and not sharing the power with the Sunnis. Contrary to previous reports, a battle is still raging between Iraqi security forces and Sunni militants. For the biggest oil refinery, they've surrounded the facility and claimed to cease most of the Talafar airport. ISIS attacks on civilians could amount to war crimes. Duh. There's quite a, quite a little bit of information here. Saudi Arabia has meanwhile denied claims it was lending support to ISIS. Oh, really? Really? Amaliki's rival jockey to replace him. Hmm. With the country in turmoil, rivals of the Prime Minister are running a campaign to force him out. With some of them angling for support from Western backers. Their effort received a massive boost from Obama on Thursday, who stopped short of calling for him to resign. <laughs> he wants some more regime change, apparently. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, we can get you a little video here about a Iraqi militant seized former chemical weapons factory. So, well, they put quite a bit of information in their little article over here from India. So, once I get this posted, I will edit it and put this link up. And you can click it and see the whole thing, but expect your gas prices to rise. Mine have already rose by a dime that I noticed today whenever I gassed up. Um, if they just take it over, I don't think you're going to see a, a dollar at the pump. But if somehow something happens and it's blown, well, get ready. So, things are changing. I'll keep you informed.